why would I want to stay in a place that besides the zip code where I live, almost every other zip code in America is taking away people's businesses. And I'm paying on top of any of that. I'm just, I'm giving them 50% of my money. We're talking about illegal, 100% legal. And it is legal. You may not know that from the TV shows, but it's legal. You know, what's funny is as I've been kind of thinking out loud for the last few months about potentially leaving or, or con just considering the idea of it, that is one of the most common resistances that I've heard from nearly everybody um, is that, you know, there's going to be nowhere to hide, you know, uh, if things yeah. get really bad. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I mean, here's the reality, right? I had someone today who's like, convince me I should read your book. And it's like, I'm not going to, but it's a best-selling book. Like you, I've got a best-selling book on Amazon. I'm very proud of it. I said, you know what? I had another guy recently. He came to me. He was uh, a friend of someone that I've helped save a lot of money. And uh, we said, okay, here's what it's going to cost you. We're going to save you a million and a half dollars in taxes in the next couple of years. And he's like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't pull the trigger. And okay, no judgment. I mean, if you'd rather pay one and a half million than 50,000, know, go right ahead. Um, but I think so many people... 99% uh, of people, they, they really don't want to be free. They really don't want to take risks. Um, you know, people have so many things. And I mean, your world, right? Buy when there's blood in the streets. I have a friend uh, who runs a, a business helping people invest in Asia. He lives in Bangkok. He bought an apartment where a bomb went off, like next to the lobby. And he, there were all the, like, the scared American and French expats were trying to sell because the bomb went off. And he paid 40% less. And a week later, everyone forgot the bomb went off. And, the, you know, he just went right up. So, you know, if you're going to buy when there's blood in the streets, that's when you've got to do. You've got to buy when the bomb goes off. You've got to buy when some lunatic is running the country. You've got to buy whenever. And, you know, what? maybe occasionally it doesn't work out. Uh, but, you know, so many people want to be tough. They're tough, right? You know, they're, they're, you know they want to be Jim Rogers. They want to be whatever. But it's tough to be Jim Rogers. It's tough to do what we're talking about here because it requires that you get out of your comfort zone. You really have to buy when there's blood in the streets. You really have to go to places that your friends and family are going to say you're nuts. And if you can't live with that social pressure, it's not going to work for you and you can be like the rest of the 99%. I don't say that to be nasty. I say it because, listen, I hire people. We've got over 30 people working for us full time in house. And people ask, well, if you're the nomad, why don't they work remotely? I said, we tried that with a smaller team and people got sick of it. So I hire people who want to work and they want to live with their boyfriend in the city where they're from and they want to eat their food. And when I bring them to somewhere, uh, I've got people coming to, to Colombia next week and they're not going to want to eat the spicy food because they like their food. Right. And so most people, by the way, they're beautiful people, but most people don't want to to change. They like where they're from. They like what they're doing. They're willing to pay the tax. It's worth the trade off. And so they don't want to be exceptional and go where they're treated best. And so that's, I think, when the excuses come in. I think just being honest, I don't want to go. If it costs me 50% to live in Buffalo, New York, I'm happy to pay the freight. Okay, fine. Let's just be honest about it. In a video like that and you, and you were, were kind of saying something like that similar, and I was listening to it in the gym. Like I said, I mean, I really am taking this seriously for myself and my wife and my daughter and my wife is too. And so, you know, I've been really going through a lot of your, your, your videos and, and listening to the psychology of it. And when you said it like that, I said, well, why would I want to stay in a place that besides the zip code where I live, almost every other zip code in America is taking away people's businesses. And I'm paying on top of any of that. I'm just, I'm giving them 50% of my money and, and yeah. over the course of 40 years. And so it's interesting when you put it that way. Um, and it's like, we don't want to be free or we don't want to change or we don't want to take risks. But on the subject of freedom, as it pertains to, to finances, let me ask you, as you've grown your business and you've worked, you know, with, with a lot of very, 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 you know, you work with your, your slogan is you work with seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, helping them internationalize essentially. Um, yeah. What are some of the things that you think are important right now for those that are taking their freedom seriously? Because the listeners on this channel, they care about financial freedom. They care about outside of financial freedom, just having genuine freedoms in their life. What do you think are important right now in a world where, you know, they said 75% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That was before the lockdowns. The UN yeah. said over 250 million people at least are going to
going to be pushed into poverty from the lockdown. So yep. globally, you, you've got a serious situation here. What do you think, especially for, you know, millennials and, 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 and the younger crowd, what are important things we need to know about business and money to ensure our, our freedoms in this changing world? Well, I think, look at, uh, you go back to uh, 1950, 1960, the rate of extreme poverty in the world was over 50%. And you look at the state of the world in that case, you had a few countries. This is the premise of what I talk about, by the way. Back then, there weren't that many countries. Even when I was born in 1984, uh, the U.S. was the best place in the world to be born. It was one of the freest economies. Uh, it was number one in many things because the places that I'm talking about now didn't exist. Colombia was under Pablo Escobar. Malaysia was like a kampong, a village, right? I mean, you had these, you know, Georgia was part of the USSR. Um, and so... Just look in that brief period of time. You've gone from 55-ish percent extreme poverty to under 10 percent. Why? The world became more capitalist. The world became more open. And now, in just the last year, you're correct. I, I saw 180, but they might have bumped it up to 250 million people are going to go back into extreme poverty. And so I think what that shows you is, you know, the place that you're connected to. If you're connected to one place, if you are not mobile, mobility has been the key. Right? Why? Let I me mean, look at people who work for me. I have the benefit of going to a country like Serbia, Georgia, Armenia, uh, North Macedonia, hiring people much less than I would pay someone in the U.S., and that's still an above-average salary. But then I have the benefit of saying I charge people in Western amounts, uh, and so the people who are good work their way up to like an American-level salary in many cases, um, and so you know, their mobility their ability to think outside the box and look at maybe I don't have to work for a company in Serbia means they can make a lot more money. So do you have the same mobility is the first question. If you are a real estate investor, I've had a number of guys recently, they have you know, $30 million real estate portfolios in New York City or in Texas or wherever else. You're not very mobile. I said, why don't we at least sell some of these properties and put it somewhere else with lower taxes, fewer regulations, higher yield. Because my friend who has the business helping people invest in Cambodia, their rent, the number of people who didn't pay rent in the last year during all this was zero. They collected pretty much every dollar, minus like $100, I think, for one guy for one month. This is not like, I, I need six months to pay. Everybody paid. And so, you know, if you're not mobile, if your business is not mobile, if you don't have some mobility, you're going to have a problem. And so that's the first step. From there, it's do I want to plan A or do I want to plan B? My plan was the plan A. I'm leaving the U.S. I'm immediately going to reduce my tax rate with things like the foreign earned income exclusion. If I'm not an American, I'm going to use taxed on residents to leave my country's tax system and set up residence somewhere else. Um, I'm going to live overseas, lower cost of living, more freedom, lower taxes, etc. If you're not ready to make the move and you're worried about what could happen, I do think that things... I'll leave when things get bad enough as famous last words. But I would set up a plan B to where I have a second residence permit. Potentially, I own a home in that place. So where I feel more comfortable, you know, on a human level going to that second residence. I'm going to be working towards a second passport if I'm not going to acquire one outright through a citizenship by investment program. I'm going to at least look at paper residence, for example, where I can go and, you know, put $30,000 in the bank, come back for one week a year. In four years, I hope to get my passport, right? And so uh, that plus offshore banking, offshore gold storage, I don't want to be dependent on what happens if the U.S. decides that they're going to uh, crack down on crypto or crack down on gold or devalue the U.S. dollar. I'm going to be diversified in other places so that one country does not screw me over. My money has a place where it lives. And obviously there's rules and regulations to follow. We're not talking about hiding money. We're talking about illegal 100% legal, and it is legal. You may not know that from the TV shows, but it's legal. And also having an option, whether you're exercising it immediately or whether you're keeping it in your back pocket for having a place to go where you are welcome and you are wanted and they let you in, that's what I would do for everybody. So it's mobility first, being part of the global you know, world, and then it's a plan A or a plan B. Interesting. Yeah, the mobility is the... Uh... The hard one it's almost like we've been conditioned to think we need to go somewhere to get our job and so we become you know location dependent but in this kind of new theme of 2020 where depending on the location you lived you might have had your employment taken away do you think that the best way to do that is 
exclusively through the internet? Or I guess you even said you had real estate people where you technically don't even need the internet for it, although you could build an internet component of that business. You could just move some of your capital to another country and still have the same uh, real estate model of physical real estate, just diversifying where you are. Over the years, I've had a number of people, mainly in the US and Australia, who when you get down to brass tacks, they're making one or 2% net yield on their property. By the time the government's done taking their share and all the fees and all the taxes and everything else, they're making one or 2%. And I said, at the very least, even if we're not gonna have a tax advantage, let's say you're an American, you live in the US, or you're an Australian, you live in Australia, right? Americans are taxed no matter where they live. There are some exclusions and some exceptions. Uh, obviously, everyone else in the world can simply leave their country and choose where they want to be taxed. But regardless, if you have real estate in Australia, you, me, or anyone else, you know, we're going to be taxed in Australia, and we're going to have that tiny little return. So even if it's not a tax benefit, move some of that money to a Cambodia, to a Turkey, to a Colombia, where you can get you know, better returns, where property goes up more quickly, more steadily, because it's less correlated. It's not like up and down, like where I lived in Arizona. It goes up, it goes down. Um, and so I think that that's a good first step. I, I think whatever you can do to be mobile, I'm very mobile, but again, I have four different places in the world, plus a couple of people who, you know, work from home as kind of uh, support staff, uh, on their own. You know, I have people who are in the office. We have an office. I just spent three months in Serbia setting up our, our new office in Serbia. We're still hiring there and those people work there and I meet them occasionally. They come to me, I come to them, but I'm running it mobily. I've run businesses in the United States. I had a business in the radio industry, uh, selling stuff in the U.S., helping distressed radio stations. I ran that business from China, from uh, Panama, from all over the world uh, with a phone. And so I think a lot of people don't think they can be mobile. I also, one of my investments in the U.S., I had a business for about a year and a half. I couldn't find anyone to clean my swimming pool. So I, I bought a tiny little swimming pool cleaning business, and we built it up to one of the biggest companies in Arizona, and then we sold it. And... You know, if I would have built it out a little bit longer, I think that could have been mobile because I had guys, again, the guy who was the pool repair guy just wanted to live with his girlfriend in, in Chandler, right? He didn't want to be, be flying all over the world. And so if you have a team that you can trust, obviously it's easier online. Um, but I think that a lot more businesses can be mobile if you have the confidence. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people. Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.